Hi, I'm Jeremy Bayaki here with another episode of The A-List. Here on our show today, Kevin Mano. Hi, Jeremy. How are you, man? Good. Thanks for having me. So the reason I brought you here today is to, uh, our public wants to know, how did you get to where you are today? Uh, well, today, uh, let me first say where I am. I do uh, the night show on Q101, Chicago's alternative radio station. It's 101.1 FM. Uh, man, how did I get there? I'm actually very lucky because I'm young. I'm only 26 years old, and to be doing full-time radio in, uh, in the third biggest market in the country, is, it's, it's rare. Most people at my age are in the middle of nowhere. Um, I went to school. I wanted to do radio since I was a little kid. My brother and I both, he, he's, uh, he's kind of alongside me. Um, he's two years older, but we went to school. We went to North Central College in mm -hmm. Naperville, have a really good radio program over there. And from there, we both got internships at Q101 because we, uh, we grew up listening to Q101 and we always wanted to work there. So. From the internship, we just sort of, I keep saying we because we really kind of came up the exact same way. Um, we just really worked hard, as hard as humanly possible. That's probably the best advice I can give anybody is just work hard. Um, and climb the ladder and eventually I was doing part-time stuff on weekends and then like overnights, like the worst possible schedule. Um, and just over the years, uh, up until this past summer, my brother and I were doing the afternoon show together. Uh, we did that for about a year, and then a really bizarre series of events. I was let go. It was all on good terms. They, they let me go in July. Um, it was all like budgetary reasons. And then like a month later, they let him go, also on good terms. Um, and then in December, they asked me to come back. So now I'm back at Q101. It's mm. been a really bizarre road to answer your question. Mm. Uh, it's a big answer to the question, but yeah, that's, that's sort of my path to doing nights on Q101 right now. All right, so give us a normal day run down on when you get to the studio. Um, well, normally I will, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm on at seven o'clock, I start at seven, so I'll usually try and get there by five at the latest. Mm -hmm. Um, and just kind of go through websites and things and try and sort of like pull some material or info on bands or concert information or whatever. Um, and just kind of put the show together. It's three, I'm there, it's either three hours or five hours depending on the night. So uh, just kind of two hours of prep time, sort of putting mm -hmm. things together before I actually go on the air. And, uh, and then I do the show starting at seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so do you choose what's going to be played during your shift? No, no, not really at all. Um, we have a little bit of freedom, but um, all of commercial radio, I'll make a general statement and just say all of commercial radio, it's all programmed and we've got a programming department of about five people that really sort of scientifically choose the music. Not only like what bands and songs we're playing at any given time, like if we're going to start playing the new uh, whatever song, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they, they do decide those things, but they also sort of decide the order, like two old songs and then a new song and you know what I mean it's all very scientific try and like I do a lot of research and focus groups and stuff to see you know it, it's it's almost a little too scientific for my for my taste but whenever you're listening to a commercial radio station it's all being played pretty much all being played in that order for a reason mm -hmm. so yeah the the jocks the DJs have like a a very slim amount of control over that but we, we have some we have some some freedom in there they, they trust us enough to you know if we need to make a decision to make that decision mm -hmm. so when are you on you said for like three to five hour shifts well we have a show on q101 it's a syndicated show it's been around forever love line uh, mm -hmm. with dr drew is the name of the show and uh we run that from 10 to midnight sunday night through thursday night so uh when i'm on monday through thursday it's sort of confusing i'm on from seven to ten and then we have Loveline at 10. Mm -hmm. On Friday nights, we don't air Loveline. It's just all music, so I'm on uh, from 7 to midnight on Fridays. So you pretty much work the graveyard shift there. Well, uh, no. I mean, getting out at 10 o'clock is, is not so bad. I you know, still um, have a life after 10. But when you get out at midnight, yeah, it's kind of it's difficult mm -hmm. to, um, to see people. But I like it. I like it. I like going in in the evening because I have the whole day to myself. I'd rather be out and about doing things during the day when the sun is shining opposed to... Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a different schedule, but it's nice. I've had, a, I've had so many different schedules over there. Mm -hmm. I've worked mornings and afternoons and midnight. I've, I've gone in to start work at, at midnight before, and uh, I really do enjoy this. I enjoy doing the night show. Mm -hmm. 
So being a DJ, what you must have like a favorite style, muse, uh, favorite song, favorite band? Yeah, um, I grew up, like I said, listening to Q101. So I mean, I've, I've sort of been raised on the whole alternative rock thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I'm very, very fortunate to have the job that I have. Um, in college, we, uh, my brother and I and another guy, we did a punk rock radio show. And so that was that's sort of been my passion since high school, just like a lot of I don't even want to generalize and say punk rock. I'll just say, I don't, I don't know, a lot of indie bands and just, um, they're, uh, man, I, I feel like this is such a difficult question to answer because those are my roots, but uh, there's really a lot of music out there in the world and I kind mm -hmm. of just like exploring it and if it doesn't necessarily fit into a genre, that's okay with me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I just like uh, just exploring music, exploring, I, I would say rock music more mm -hmm. so than hip hop or anything, but uh, just, uh, yeah, I, I like I like a lot of different stuff. Is there uh, like a specific group you like or to listen to, or is it um, just a couple of my favorite bands? Against Me, um, the band Lucero, the Gaslight Anthem, uh, the guys in Rise Against, their Chicago band. I've actually known those guys for probably eight years. We've you know had a lot to do with them back when we were in college and whatnot. So those guys, not only one of my favorite bands, but some of my best friends. Um, yeah, I could keep going, but there's a little handful mm. of bands. So is there like who's your idol for like from the start you said you wanted to be a radio host who did you always like look up to like well when I was a little kid too young to really listen to the radio uh my uncle my dad's brother did radio and tv and stuff so when I, I mean I'd be a little kid we'd go you know visit him at various radio stations around the country wherever he was working and I think from that point on my brother and I both really kind of wanted to do that you know what mm -hmm. I mean so we would go home and make our own little radio shows with the tape recorder or something so it started really even before I was listening to the radio mm -hmm. you know so I'd say my uncle I guess yeah so you said you mentioned Chicago is the third big largest radio mm -hmm. uh, market if you had the chance to would you move to like well what is the second and first uh, New York and LA are one and two um, if there was a if there was the only reason I would move is if I didn't have a job here, and if there was a really good offer somewhere else, I love Chicago, and I have, if it was up to me, I wouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not just gonna pick up and leave on my own. I love this place, I grew up here, and uh, I think it's the greatest city in the world. Um, so if it were just me saying, oh, I think I'll move, no, that's never gonna happen. But if, uh, if the job is right, of course I would. Mm. Is there any like radio hosts that you would want to like steal their like time frame, or? Not really. Um, no. I see everyone for years has always thought mornings were um, like the best thing you could possibly do. But now with this new measurement system and stuff, people are finding out that that's not so true anymore because people listen to the radio just as much in the afternoon as they do the morning. So mm -hmm. and morning, I mean, for years, that was like the, the spot to have. Um, but the schedule is awful. I mean, you have to wake up at like three in the morning every day and go in and it's, uh, so I don't really, if I can avoid doing mornings, I'd be okay with that. Uh, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm really pretty carefree about it, so I'm happy, happy anywhere, I guess. Yeah, so have you ever been like out in public and be like, hey, you're, are you that, like people recognize your voice or? Yeah, actually, it's weird, because I mean, we have a little bit more phase now. I know radio is a, it's not a visual medium, um, but we do a lot of stuff online. We do a lot of videos and things. So I do every once in a while get recognized, uh, you know, from the face. But it's super weird when people hear your voice and then say, like, wait a minute, are you on Q101? Like, that is just really weird. And then to always hear what they thought you would look like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I expected you to be a black guy or I expected <laughs> you to be 400 pounds. You know what I mean? It's always weird to, to get the, uh, the response on, on what they envisioned. But, uh, but yeah, it's weird to... Um, have someone recognize you based on your voice. It happens. Yeah. yeah, it's just like a weird thing that you just... You don't think about it, you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know. I just go and I do my job and you I have fun doing it, but it's... I, you don't think about the fact that you're coming through these speakers and people know your voice, but if you walk past them, they wouldn't recognize you, but if they heard you talk, they would recognize that. It's just, it's yeah. a weird, it's a weird thing to wrap your mind around. You don't really see yourself as like a celebrity. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, not at all, absolutely not. And if I ever do get recognized, it's usually at a concert or a show or, yeah. you know, something to do with music. So with like Q101, like, does they, do they like go to different like events and different things? Oh yeah, we do a lot of stuff, we're always out, yeah. Do you like ever do these mobile shows? Always, yeah, we're, I mean, I'm out all the time, whether sometimes we have to just go like, 
join Kevin Mano at Verizon Wireless on Saturday from noon to two. So like we'll have to go stand in these like cell phone stores or something. But uh, most of what we do, going out to bars and giving away tickets, and you know we'll just go to shows and stuff like that. So it's mostly like promotional things. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. So do you like? So you said you don't choose like the music that's being played, but do you have like what say do you have in in music? Yeah. Not a whole lot. Uh, again, our programming department handles all that. Mm -hmm. um, back when my brother and I were, uh, were both doing the show at Q101, we had a new music show. We had an hour every night of, uh, of new music, and that was completely ours. That was, that was about as, uh, as free as you get in mm -hmm. radio. We were very lucky to do that, so we get to pick the music and play whatever we wanted as long as it was new. That was the, uh, you know, the guideline was it, it had to be new, and that was, that was great. I love doing that, and one day maybe, uh, I would like to get into the programming side of it more, you know, behind, sitting behind a desk opposed to in the studio mm -hmm. and do that because I love music. That's, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right. So, like, being a DJ, do you, like, have, like, the to, I don't know, like, the setup, like, the standard, if you think of radio, you think of the guy behind the desk with the mic and the two, um... I stand up when I do it. Okay. Um... Like, we're, what's the setup like? Well, we're in the Merchandise Mart, which is uh, almost like a mall. Not really with, like, normal stores, but like a showroom mall. Like, a lot of, like, if you want to get a bath fixture or something. You know what I mean? People yeah. will go there for that sort of stuff. So, um, it's a very gigantic building, and there's a lot of people there and a lot of different weird businesses. Um, and we have a big picture window right out into the hallway of the Merchandise Mart on the second floor. So, there's constantly people going back and forth. So... That's what I look at all day. But when they look in and see us, I mean, they see like a big desk with a bunch of different microphones um, for, for guests or whoever we might have in. And then I'm on the other side of that behind all the controls and everything. And I've got my microphone and telephone and all the, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty nice. It's top of the line stuff. Has, and I stand up just to get the blood flowing. Yeah. Has the technical aspect of radio changed since you interned there? Did Not I really. I mean... It's sort of, uh, we got in at, the, at, the, at a great time, we were, you know, when we were doing it in college. Uh, we were playing a lot of stuff off CD and mini discs, which is a, a medium that sort of died out. Um, but, uh, but no, we, uh, it's been pretty advanced since, you know, 10 years ago when we got involved. Back mm -hmm. in the day, they had to, you know, cut tape and have the reel to reels and stuff, and I never had to touch any of that. It's all been... Pretty, pretty digitalized since I've been involved. So you guys like use like flash drives for the music or? No, it's all programmed onto uh, just like a, I guess a big server. Um, and you know, we have the screen, a monitor in the studio. It's touch screen. So if, if you named a band, if you wanted to hear Nirvana, I would just, you know, hit artist and then it would show up letters at the bottom and I hit N and then I find Nirvana mm -hmm. and just touch it and bring it over. It's all, it's all on a big hard drive and it's, it couldn't be simpler. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. So like, do you like choose? Oh, nah. Uh, who like? Do you pick guests to go on? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, mostly bands. Um, like, do people come to you and be like, "Can I be on your show?" I every know. once in a while. Well, that's. Uh, I mean, we'll get a lot of emails and stuff like, "Hey, John Johnson wrote a book about bicycles. Can he be a guest on your show?" And it's like, "No, what? Mm -hmm. No, not at all." Um, but yeah, I mean, we, if there's a band in town and they're playing a show, it's generally, if it's one of our bands, it'll be sponsored by Q101, so it's very easy to make that happen, like, can mm -hmm. we get them in the studio to do a quick interview or something, mm -hmm. so usually we just focus on music. Like, who is the most famous, famous person, would you say, has been on your show? Um, well, I guess if you want to say most famous, I would have to say Paris Hilton. I interviewed her, I was out in mm -hmm. LA. Uh, I don't have any interest in Paris Hilton as a person, or mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any interest in promoting whatever it is she does, but if you just want to talk in terms of fame, mm -hmm. I would say she's probably the most famous. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, you're on at night? Mm -hmm. I do uh, 7 to 10 or 7 to midnight, depending mm -hmm. on the night on Q101, yeah. So, that's... Do you, like, I know this is kind of weird, but do you, like, is there anything else you would think of even doing besides radio? TV. I was unemployed, like I said, for a few months, and I, uh, I was really sort of pursuing some, some television angles. I uh, had some interviews and stuff, meetings, before I got a call from Q101 asking me to come back. Mm -hmm. um, and we do, like I said, we do a lot of videos for the internet at Q101, and I've always, uh, I've always sort of had a passion there. I did it in college a little bit. Um, and maybe one day in the future, I don't really know, it's sort of a, a weird profession, a weird business, but uh, 
maybe that could be a, a next step for me one day in mm. the future, I guess. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank Let's you, man. Great job. This was fun. Uh, uh, we'll be back next time with another episode of The A-List. <laughs>